Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the fourth video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion Control Series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get going. In the third session, we started with basic data form control of Sync Fusion and understood underlying editors such as text boxes and other controls that can be used along with this control. We quickly created a profile form using data form, added the data annotations, and changed the layout of the form to make it look prettier. Also, the text inputs have been categorized into groups by name, address, and phone. Please refer to the previous video before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on grouping controls by icons, adding advanced annotations to the properties, learning about comments and editing in the data form, and examining an alternative approach for defining annotations by code in the data form control. Let's now switch to the Visual Studio and continue with coding. I have my earlier project running. Now let's add icons to the name, phone, and address details section to differentiate the visual representation of the groups from the previously defined groups classification. Sync Fusion provides a true type font file input layout icons. We need to add this font file to show those icons. I have already downloaded that font from the Sync Fusion and let's now quickly add to the resources font folder. Let's right click on this font folder, add an existing item. Let me switch to the folder where I have downloaded the fonts. Let's choose all files here. Click input layout icons or TTF selected and it gets added to the fonts folder. Now once this is added, we have to wire it up in the bootstrap event or in the main program. Let me switch to the MAUI program here. Notice that there are fonts already added to the main program. Let's, let's copy one of it, paste it again. Let me change this to input layout icons.ttf and change the title as well to this icons. Now the next step is to add the grouping icon to the beginning of the control or to the end of the control. And this is supported by a property called leading view or trailing view in data form item. Let's quickly switch to personal information XAML file and bind the event called generate data form item. Let's choose this new event handler to automatically create the binding to the event. We go to the code behind of this personal information file and see that the event is generated automatically. Let's do some coding over here. If e dot data form item it's not equal to null. Then let's get started with e dot data form item dot field name. And the field name is first name here, first name. Then let's say e dot data form item dot leading view equal to new label. And let's define some properties for this label. Let's say font size equal to 18. And the family, font family equal to the family that we have added, which will be input layout icons let's give some height here height request equal to 24 vertical text alignment let's make it as text alignment dot end comma text equal to f each icon is represented by its own identification letter so in this case for name it is f let's close this and save it restart the project Looks like our code changes aren't working. Let's see what has gone wrong. Yeah, notice that instead of first name, we should create the field name as name. And that's it. Let me restart the application since it is a code behind change. Look at that. We now have a grouping icons in front of first name. Let me add this to phone and address details and also for email. Let me copy paste this code. Set the field name is equal to what did we add here? We call it as contact number. And if it is contact number, let's add the text as E. And let's copy paste this further again. And for address, let's add field name equal to address. Let's add it as C, which is the representation of icon. And if it is email, it should be G. So let me change the field name to mail or email. It is email right now here. Let's change it to email. 
restart this application. Look at that, we have successfully created the group icons before each and every field item over here in front of address, mail, phone, and name. This looks much better. After adding the icon changes, we see that we have lost the uniformity of these text boxes. Let's add some code to make them look good in terms of uniformity. Let me switch back to the code and start back and add else if statement here. I'm doing this so that we can add another dummy label over here so that the text box is pushed and it is uniform. Let me remove this else if statement and let me remove the text as well here in the last label. Let's just declare a label and without giving any text or the icon. Let me run this application. Notice that all the text boxes are now properly aligned. Let me switch back to the code and start the validations using annotations now. Let's now add some required validations here. Let's do it by data annotation tab called required and it's not allow empty strings. So we'll say allow empty strings is false. Come on, error message. Let's add an error message saying first name should not be empty. Let's also add one more validation for the length of first name, which we can address it using string length annotation tab. Let's add, I mean the property. Let's say, let's make it maximum as 50 and say error message equal to name should not exceed 10 characters to make it simple let me make it 10 so that we can successfully verify that notice that the moment i press the tab we got the validation under the text box we can customize this label and color and a lot of other things but right now let's focus on the text box validation now let me type in something saying i wish test name the moment i tab the second validation is triggered which says name should not exceed 10 characters let me remove this it's still 10 characters now it is fine the validation is passed now let's quickly switch to the xaml file now let's read on this application there are three validation modes available in data form type in the validation mode equal to lost focus which is what we have seen just now let me change it to manual the moment you change it to manual, you need to trigger it manually. So the only way which we can do is by clicking on the save button, which is what sometimes in some scenarios, we need to fire the validations only when we click on the save button. So let me switch back to the code. And uh, even before I switch back to the code, let me come back here and let me add an event of the clicked event to the button. Let me wire up that event thing. Clicked equal to, let me choose the new event handler so that the event is generated automatically. Over here, I can specify that this dot data form dot validate. That's all it is. It is simple, isn't it? Let me restart the application now. Let me type in something here. Notice that nothing has changed. The moment I click on the save button, see that the first name should not be empty. Let me change it to, let me exceed it more than 10 characters. Now see that the moment I click on save button, the second validation is fired, which says name should not exceed 10 characters. Now this is the manual mode. Let me switch back to the XAML file again. And then we have another validation mode called property change. That means whenever you type in something on change of the property, it will throw the validation. Let me go back here. Let's comment this validate and switch back again. And let me restart the application. Let's type in something here tab the basic validation is not fired let me type in i wish let's see test one two three so you are now observing that the moment i change some property in the text box the validation is getting triggered so these are the three basic validations available in sf data form which are built in uh, the control by syncfusion team so we can leverage on these things and build our own custom data forms and other things pretty easily. Let's add a couple of more properties to this form, such as password and gender. Let me copy the last name and put it here and group it under the name itself. Let's make it as password. Now we want to mark this as the data type as password. Let me change this password group name. Let's add a data annotation called data type is nothing but data type dot password. Notice that we have many other properties available under data type. I recommend you to feel free to use all of these. So 
So let's say data type dot password now. That's all it is. We have the password. Let's add a gender as well. Before adding a gender, we can technically bind the gender as an enum. So let's say property enumeration. Let's create a default enumeration. Let's call it as gender, add male, female, and other. And let's take this gender and bind it to a gender property as well. Let me type in here and call instead of string. Let me say gender add gender here and display name is nothing but since we copied it, let me remove the data type for gender. Let me restart this application. Notice that we now have the password as a text box with the characters hidden while we type in the characters and you can mask or unmask this password text box. And we have the gender as a drop down which is generated from this enumerator, which means the sync fusion data form understands the easily based on the input type. Let's switch back to the code and add more validations to all of these controls. To save some time, I have already added the required field validations and string line validations to all of these properties. I have also added a prompt which prompts for the respective property so that user can understand what he needs to enter over there. Let me restart the application again and show you that. Let me type in something here which exceeds 10 characters. Notice that the validations are being fired right now along with the required field validators on each of these form properties. I have also added a property called commit mode and assigned lost focus as the property value. Similar to the validation mode, data form provides a property to determine when the value should be committed to the underlining data object to allow users to commit only correct values, which means the underlining contact info object properties are assigned only when the data validation is successful and committed. There are three options available for commit mode property, which are lost focus, property change, and manual, similar to the validation mode. Feel free to change them and test it by yourself. In the next session, we will add other editors such as numeric, checkbox, radio, switch, and date pickers to the contact form. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.